What's up guys, it's They Coming, and today I'm back recapping another war with Boston Tea Party. Um, this is actually our preseason war against 1001 crew. This is not a, man a managed or anything by the league itself, but something that the leaders of our clan and theirs put together just basically to have a little warm-up match for the season, and we came out on top. 82 to 82 uh, 92.43% to their 91.70%. We won the war by less than seven tenths of 1%. So obviously an extremely, extremely close matchup. We are super, super happy to have, you know, gone through that war with them and experienced that. Um, we are, we feel confident moving forward with CWL. Anyways, um, let's see what the war map looks like here. So, uh, they were able to pick up four, three stars on our town, all tens and, uh, they two starred two of our 11s and left one star on our top 11. On, on, on the other side, uh, we were able to three star um, three of their Town Hall 10s and left uh, and two starred all of their 11s. So they uh, three starred one more of our Town Hall 10s, but because they couldn't pick up that two onto uh, Mr. Smiley, that was the equalizer in terms of star count there. Great job, great job to both sides there. Um, also, uh, let's see, what else could I talk about here? Oh yeah, all of our nines did actually pretty well this war. I think there were only two bases that, uh, we just said, you know what, we, 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 we don't want to waste any more nine attacks because the nines could scout up. Um, I, we just had a couple of town all tens dip down and clear out two of the nines that had taken, you know, uh, maybe two or three attacks a piece. Uh, so we felt really good about the nine play this war. Um, I think where we were lacking the most was our Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 11. And I believe on 1001 Crew's side, that was the, the exact same thing. 10 v 11 was also weak. And um, ultimately, that's what happened at the end, end of this war. If you look at the war events, I mean, you had Mr. Smiley under attack three times in the last 20 minutes each time. Someone just barely not able to pick up that two star on him, and so that was very lucky on on, on our part that that. Um, gosh, look at all the hits though. He was even hit a fourth time, forty eight percent one star. Incredible stuff, incredible. Anyways, let's get right into these attacks. I have six for you today, and uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, first Mighty Clasher attacking number twelve. Um, by the way, guys, that the number nine on both sides. Uh, there is something going on with our uh, lineup, and both clans agreed not to attack each other's nines. Uh, just um, I, w I won't get into it too much. I think it had something to do with with a with, with a base not being built or or whatever. But it, w it was agreed upon. It was fair game. Uh, both sides did not attack each other's number nine. Anyways, number twelve here, Mighty Clasher going in on Krog. Now. This was a wow attack. I think this was uh, just beautiful. So he brings in this single Lava Hound to just jump in on this first AD before anything else has happened. Uses a haste, three balloons, and a Lava Hound. He gets one air defense and another Archer Tower out, out of this. I mean, incredible value. He also gets the CC Lure. And just for the cost of the Lava Hound, one haste and three balloons, he picks up a nice portion of the base that's going to affect his loon pathing. Anyways, he drops his king down here, drops the first poison, drops the second poison, and the queen. And their job is just going to be eliminate the enemy C CC right here, el uh, eliminate the, en the enemy heroes, and move on with life. So he drops the baby dragon to assist in that process, cleaning up the baby dragon, and also turning around and getting the witch who would sort of come off to the side. And then the baby dragon does walk in there. She, he sees the enemy queen, jumps on her while she's still poisoned. Doesn't quite get her, but then friendly queen steps up and pops in, in enemy queen, and that's going to be good. Now the Lalo should start around the uh, two o'clock position and sweep counterclockwise. Yep, there it is. First lava hound down. Uh, balloons coming in. Second lava hound down, and several great balloons coming across. He's going to haste uh, this. Uh, sort of easternmost group across and heal on top of this wizard tower farm right here. There it is, looking really nice. He's got two rages in the bag. Last Lava Hound does go in from the backside with some trailing loons, and he's going to pop a rage. Very nicely done. All these balloons are coming in hot, right on top of the Tesla farm. Bam, bam. Looking good. And a nice fat wad of balloons gets right on top of that last air defense with a rage takes out the Archer Tower and onto the last air targeting defense, and this base is wrecked. 
he just, I mean, he brought the, the Suicide Hero um, Penta and just smashed it. But I really liked what he did over here. I I would never think, just send a Lava Hound to Haste and three balloons and carve out such, I mean, that was just high value. I mean, that was a great scout. It was a great look at the base and just judgment of what he needed. Great job to Mighty Clasher. Let's move on to the next one. This will be Lopez versus number 14, uh, Chazels, Chazel Sidore, Chazel, I don't know, you know, someone probably knows, but I just, I just don't. Anyways, he's bringing the Stone Hobo, and he gets a great, like, deep funnel here, and, um, kind of on an interesting side, too, because you see he's got these, like, sort of narrow, long compartments, these long tracks, uh, this is something that would kind of worry me, uh, if I was trying to get some bowlers to go in, but he does such a good job just peeling all of these uh, structures off here, all of these uh, trash buildings, that he's able to get his bowlers to walk straight in. So he's taking some time with his funnel. You know, he's got two golems. They're both below half health at this point, but he's established the funnel now. Now, it's not perfect yet, so watch what he does. He trails in the third golem. He drops the king. He drops the queen, but he's not immediately dropping these bowlers because this archer tower could potentially make those bowlers wander out. He waits the queen takes it down and they redirect to go straight on in. Beautiful, double poison down. Golem's way out in front. Very, very good job there. Heal down to help sustain some of these golems and, and golemites so they still uh, have the defenses aggroed onto them. The second jump is down and a rage and they're just like ripping through here. Now, I almost would have dropped that rage a little bit deeper if I were him. Just, just looking at this, I probably would have dropped the rage slightly deeper because uh, once the rage was dropped, they basically walked out of it pretty quickly. Um, so, but, but anyways, he started his hogs from the 12 o'clock position. They're going to be sweeping counterclockwise around the base. And really, there's only like two point defenses that can hurt these hog riders. And the wizard tower is pointed at the golemites. So, you know, good job to Lopez, man. Crushed it. Clean up troops in the bag. He's holding on to them. There goes the minions. Got some uh, archers for the corner hut. Wizard on the top end of the ring. Queen's going to beat on several more walls, but you know what? That's that's her job. <laughs> Anyways, good job to Lopez. Moving on. Now we're going to have Q-Tech hitting number 16. And uh, this is that that attack, guys. Here's here's that attack that I did my last video on. This is the Go Weebo. And, you know, some bases can, can, can be wrecked by this. Now, would I recommend this to most people to, to do? And that is no. The reason why is it's just a hands-off raid. You know, once you put your troops down, um, it's just sort of wherever the troops end up going. I mean, yes, you do have some control by using the jump spells and getting the, the spell placement proper is absolutely critical. But it's just you have no back end. You have no control if something goes wrong, especially on a, on a fresh hit. You have no control over what happens. The first jump is in. Their rage is down. Everything is funneling straight towards the enemy. Royals, this is perfect. And that's going nicely. The poison is down for the enemy. Queen and King, they are going to get smacked in the face. And he still has a heal spell. Very, very nice there. Um, the Lava Hound does eventually pop. Those witches are going to help the Queen, taking out the pups. He's got a poison down still, helping to clean up that. Looking nice. And at this point, you're thinking, okay, what's going to happen here, right? What's going to happen here? He's still got, you know, a few point defenses, but the queen still has the ability. He's got four, five witches down here banging on this wall, and they're eventually going to walk through here and help take out this cannon, the other cannon, and the air defense before the queen ever even gets over there. So excellent, excellent job, Q-Tech. Um, you know, I, these, these kind of attacks scare me because... They're not as hands-on. They're very hands-off, and um, I would not recommend this to everyone to, 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 to try, but great players who scout well can pull this off. Good job, q -Tag. Let's move on to the next one. And this will be Chunosaurus hitting X-Vengeance number 19. And uh, this is a Town Hall 9 Dragloon. And... I just thought this was great base identification. He recognizes that all four air defenses are down here exposed on the bottom side of the base, and he easily gets to these ones, um, you know, with just minimal troops. I mean, you'll you'll see exactly what he takes to pick off the, the CC here 
and all four air defenses. He basically uses the king on one side and the queen on the other. So just excellent, excellent job, man. You know, I'm honestly just like, I thought this was beautiful to watch. So many dragons survived this and you'll, and you'll see. So the queen has beat through. He's got a wizard helping the king on that bottom side and that wizard is going to be clutch. Um, king comes over, starts beating the uh, storage. He aggroes the enemy king, but he pops the ability and he's gonna come over and smack the enemy king to death. Good job. Wait a minute, the wizard then aggroed onto the king. Let's see if, if, she, if he will get this cannon. Get that cannon, get the cannon, yes. And then he's kind enough to turn around and hit that air defense. So he's got all the dragons. He just drops them all in one spot and they come in and they just wreck this queen in the face. Bam, bam, bam. All the balloons directly in behind. The queen is going to eventually walk over here, take this air defense. He decides to use the ability early to keep those dragons healthy. First rage down. All the dragons are nicely funneled going straight up the gut. He's got one or two on each side sort of cleaning those buildings so that the main pack does focus on, on, on the center. Another beautiful rage. Oh my god, high value. Value. High value rage spell. Excellent job. Another rage. Uh, looks like most of the dragons have diverted, but it's going to end up being fine. He's still got two dragons on this side, three balloons over there, some balloons coming in up top, and four, five dragons over on the top right. So no matter what happens, there's just too much for this base to handle. Good job to Chunosaurus. We can just 4 exit. Balloons do wipe that out, and they all will end on this Tesla and Corner Hut. Beautiful, man. I just, that was very unique. You don't see straight up Dragloon at Town Hall 9, at high level at least, very often. That guy needs a new base. All right, so let's move on to uh, Jesse Lando hitting Draven number 21. Now he is bringing the cold-blooded Golalo. And uh, I just thought that he had a great hero and CC kill and his queen survived. So he's just bringing the single golem just so he can funnel with all these wizards really, really hard. The enemy queen is going to beat on that golem some. Um, and this, you know, if he had two poisons here, this would have been a good opportunity to drop your lower level poison on that queen just so that she wouldn't punish that golem so much. But he gets the funnel established. That's, that's looking okay. He's got still one golemite out in front and the king does step up and smack that queen in the face, keep uh, chopping stuff down, take out the archer tower. The queen has locked onto the enemy CC dragon and she is going to take that down. Very, very nice so far for Jesse Lando. Queen steps up, just enough tanking to take out the cannon and she is gonna be relatively untouched for just a minute as he starts his Lalo around the nine o'clock position. Good job. So Loon's targeting, targeting, targeting that mortar. Haste spell to get into that first archer tower and quickly over to the cannon and then directly into the air defense. Good pathing there. One haste spell to double tap both of those uh, defenses down here. Good job, good pathing. Rage spell to push that entire group over. Um, and he's gonna have pop another rage on top of this Tesla farm. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Very nice, very nice. He's got all of his balloons on the, on the field at this point, so this is important that he moves quickly. His last hound does pop. This is kind of a scary moment. He's got about seven balloons left, and he's got one rage spell. So he pops that rage. The balloons do quickly sweep over here, take out this air defense, and then cruise on over and eventually get this archer tower. So this ended up being a little bit closer than I think he would have liked, but regardless, he takes it out. Good job to Jesse Lando. The queen does survive. Nice. Now, I'll show you the last one here. This will be Sharky hitting number 25. And this will be a stoned Bolo, meaning he's not taking hounds. He's taking three golems, CC bowlers, and 19 balloons. So what you have to notice right away, this is great, another example of great base identification. All of the air defenses are on the bottom right side of the base, right? All four. And on the top, it's all air targeting defense. But these are things that balloons can overcome with just some spells, some heals, some, some rages. You don't need a hound for that top section. So he recognizes this and he decides to bring a three golem kill squad in from uh, maybe around like four o'clock. Uh, four o'clock, And they're just gonna walk right in here and take all four air defenses on their entry. So this is just beautiful. One, two, three golems down, funneling nicely here. Looking pretty good. He's being pr pretty patient with this. 
He doesn't need to rush. He's He wants to get these corner defenses here, particularly those cannons, so that it will force the focus of the bowlers further inside. So that's good. He wall breaks. He's got two golems in there. He's got the poison down on top of the enemy CC. So the enemy CC might go ahead and just die to the poison. That's fine. And he's got the bowlers, the king and the queen walking in. And obviously his jump, where do you think it's going to go? His jump is definitely going to be going up north towards those other air defenses. Very, very nice work there. Two pretty tanky, uh, pretty beefy golems uh, left over. Uh, the king does unfortunately get out in front, and that is going to be the end of his life in just a moment here. But, you know, he says, okay, well, I'm about to give that last AD. It's time to go. Two balloons coming in, but the bowlers get that structure on, on a skip. They redirect. Two balloons on each archer tower. No haste. Nothing yet. He's got a heal and one haste left. Just targeted balloons. Surgical looning all around the base. And he's... Ooh, he probably should have saved that heal for that Tesla farm. But you know what? It ends up being okay. We know this is a three star. Good job getting on top of that wizard tower quickly. And he's got still two more loons in the bag in case he needs to drop them. He does not need to drop them though. Good job. So he's got some loons for cleanup. And he's definitely going to need that. He's got a minute left. Um, very, very nice. He drops the wizards. Kind of hesitated there. So if this has been an issue of time, I don't know that, uh, I think that may have been kind of a, a scary decision to, to hesitate. Maybe he was just trying to see where he needed to drop the troops. But good job to Sharky. Great, great ex uh, a example of base identification, knowing what you need, sort of breaking down the base into components and deciding I can deal with this area of, of the base with this part of my attack and the other end I only need this you know don't take a hound if you don't need it all right this is unusual this base design but still very skillful great job anyways once again guys congratulations to Boston Tea Party pulling out a nice preseason victory over 1001 crew also hats off to no one crew that was a really fun war and um, you know a lot of us uh, have already seen your video about the end of the war um, and we're really appreciative uh, just to be able to war against another really great clan you know people that you know are are taking things seriously and trying to win anyways guys take care see you later